Europeanization. It cuts across debates between constructivists and rationalists, between liberal institutionalists and intergovernmentalists. Europeanization also generates its own sets of debates. What is Europeanization? What is de-Europeanization? Um, how do you isolate the net EU impact? In other words, what's the smoking gun that says it was the EU that caused this change and not something else? Because Europeanization is really complex, people opt for complicated and complex explanations rather than parsimonious explanations. But they haven't as yet opted for regime complexity as an explicator or as a way of explaining Europeanization. Okay, so what is a regime? Regimes are basically defined by Krasner as uh, rules, procedures, uh, issues, uh, norms around which actors' expectations converge. Okay, we can't even agree it's a consensus. There's tends to be one focal point. Okay, what is regime complexity? It's a bit like that, but it's different. Okay, there's more than one focal point. Okay, these uh, norms are divergent. People disagree on what the norms are, okay? And so there's no hierarchy in a regime complex. So it's a bit of a free-for-all. That's the thing about, uh, about regime complexity. So has this regime complexity, the question I'm asking you, has it reinforced or has it weakened the impact of Europeanization on a leading member state, namely France, particularly with reference to French aid? Has it been something that France has used? in order to avoid Europeanization, or is it something which is reinforced Europeanization? It's automatic uh, institutional change. But if you were to look at how much change uh, France had to make compared with how much impact France had on the European Commission, well, really, it's not, you're not comparing like with like. One author has referred to the European Commission as being built to French administrative specification. Did Europeanization over these early decades leave France to give more aid? Well, no, I don't see any evidence of that. I can see that France gave more aid to the European Commission and to the EDF, but it didn't get more aid. But the points at which France gave more aid is linked to geopolitical ambitions by the likes of Mitterrand and Chirac. It wasn't really linked to the European Commission at all. Similarly, better quality aid. Did the European Commission respond to better quality aid? Well, there were moves to improve the quality of French aid on time, make it more grant focused, but that was linked to the OECD. And his reforms effectively pointed to a new awareness that France couldn't tackle the, the challenges in Africa. But not only that, but that the European Commission and the EU more generally, they were actually quite useful in this process because they provided the multiplier effect. So if you could get a French official in Barnaco or whatever to go and speak to the European Commission there, France would put in 10 million, at that time would be francs, and the European Commission would put in 10 or 15 times that amount. In some ways, you would think that the, you find in this period that the EU begins to try and exert itself as a normal entrepreneur. Okay? So in some ways, the regime complexity should provide the EU with an opportunity to really become a normal entrepreneur. Okay, so um, if you start to break down the old rules of the old age regime, suddenly um, it creates openings. It creates openings for the BRICS, of course, but it also creates openings for NGOs and actors like the EU. What has happened subsequently is that the EU has, spent, has been in all these forums, the WTO, the World Bank, the UN, various forms, and it spent its whole time negotiating amongst the member states to try and agree a position. And it's nearly always ended up with the default position, which is the neoliberal paradigm. So in effect, the EU has had an opportunity, thanks to the regime complexity, but it hasn't taken it. Okay? And what I'll argue later is that France has had an opportunity, thanks to the regime complexity, and has taken it. Europeanization, in the case of uh, France, where the Europeanization tends to happen is where it's already in France's interest and, and it may Final point, what about the value of regime complexity? I mean, I do think it has got value. I know it's been used in the security field to good effect. I think it's been used in development uh, in that way. But on the one hand, regime complexity misspelled, of course, just confusion. Um, on the one hand, regime complexity 
is uh, adds a layer of complexity which we don't really need because Europeanization already pretty damn difficult, right? So in that sense, that's not good. But on the other hand, if combined with thick prescription, uh, you know, types of data we're going through interviews and so it should be possible uh, to better establish the EU's true place in the global uh, jigsaw of e strategies and forums. And I think I'll end on that point.